Okay, good morning. Um, my name is Noel Power. I guess most of you probably have seen me or heard me speak maybe before about this. Um, so I'm going to talk today about the Windows search, search protocol and uh, trying to integrate it with uh, Elasticsearch, which was basically the subject of my last Hack Week project. So um, I did present um, on, w, on the Windows search protocol at Sousa Labs previously, so it, it was quite a while back, so maybe you don't remember or maybe you weren't at it. So I'm going to briefly recap um, about the Windows search protocol and what, what I have in it. Uh, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about the Hack Week work that I did um, looking into Elasticsearch and using it with the Windows search protocol. So for those of you who have no idea about the Windows search protocol, basically, all of this is uh, the product of um, a number of hack weeks. So when I started working on Samba, um, I started working on a hack week project to do with Windows Search Protocol, which more or less coincided um, around the same time. Uh, and I've continued working on it over a number of, of hack weeks. Um, so what is it all about? Well, the Windows Search Protocol what it does is it communicates with the Windows Search Service. So the Windows Search Service is um, a service you can enable on a, a Windows server where you could just basically point this indexer, which is what effectively it is, at uh, one or, or many um, directories on, on your, your file system or shares. And basically what it will do is it will just scrape those files, basically mining metadata and indexing it with the uh, end idea that uh, later clients can uh, push a query over the network to the server and the server will perform the search and then bundle the results up and push them back to the user. So for example, if you had things like um, music files and that the indexer will pull out the MP3 tags and you could search based on a, a music genre or an artist. So it gives you the ability to do kind of more natural searches than just a kind of a grip like search that uh, that you could also do. Um, so if you have used Windows, then you're going to be familiar with the Windows Explorer window. Uh, and if you ever uh, type in the search window, you'll get this ribbon coming up. So this is one of the ways that you can interact with the Windows search service. And you can see here you can um, search for different kinds of documents. So documents is kind of a loose term to um, basically, it, it's it's basically a type of object. So it's not a, a document in the sense of a, a text document or a, or a spreadsheet or whatever. So it can be a file, a uh, piece of music, a calendar item or a feed, anything. Um, and then with this UI, you can use any of these kind of drop downs and buttons to further refine your search. There's also a search window there that you can use if you know the magic incantations to actually uh, put something in there. Um, what code itself, it's quite simple in one way and uh, quite complex in another. So it, it's, its main purpose is just basically to uh, bundle up queries throw them across the network and allow you to be able to pull those results back. Uh, in terms of how it's organized, it's uh, focused on full text queries um, in, in terms of architecture and stuff. It, it's uh, an SMB protocol and it sits on top of the SMB pipe protocol, so it's kind of layered. Uh, as you might expect, there is, in the heart of it, there's a query message which allows you to um, Define restrictions which allow you to uh, figure out what you want to include or exclude from the, the results. And it also allows you to specify information about sorting and ordering and stuff like that. Um, additionally, there are other uh, messages there that uh, allow you to see the state of the query, whether it's finished, whether it's still running. Um, there are messages to allow you to pull back the results. And the server has a nice functionality where by if certain columns are too big, it can mark them as deferred. So there's another 
message there that allows you to pull back various columns associated with uh, a document in, in your search results. Um, and it, it'll basically fragment that value and the client can pull back the fragments and then reconstruct it later. So it does all sorts of uh, nice stuff like that. Uh, in terms of the implementation, it's a work in progress thing, obviously. Uh, it's not upstream, uh, it consists of a number of parts. So there's a server part, which is part of the SMB daemon. Uh, there's a CLI client and there is a developer centric um, translation tool. A little bit more about that later because kind of that's a major thing that I used in investigating Elasticsearch. Um, so in terms of how, how it all hangs together, so basically you have a client who talks to the SMB daemon and when the SMB daemon starts up, it forks a child process that's exclusively looking at um, a, a specific pipe. So it's a singleton process. Uh, another arrangement possibly would be to have the same way as SMB deals with RPC requests, which would be for each client connection to spawn um, a, a process per client connection. Uh, but that would that's not the way that I have organized it, although that could be an attractive way to do it um, later, maybe, uh, alternatively. Uh, it's easier to do it as a singleton process because of the amount of information that needs that possibly needs to be shared between different um, client conversations. But that is kind of a technical detail. But so anyway, there's kind of an abstract, an abstract interface defined, uh, which allows you to, in theory anyway, um, create concrete implementations for various indexers. And I mentioned Tracker here, which is the one that um, I have sort of more or less working and an Elasticsearch, which is the uh, subject of this presentation and then maybe uh, other indexers. So I call this a WSP server, but it's more like, um, I guess, kind of a bridge really. So it's basically taking these Windows search protocol messages, uh, converting the query uh, essentially, and then targeting it at some sort of alien indexer. Uh, it's not really a Windows search service. It, it just tries to provide similar functionality. Um, as I said, the current implementation supports GNOME Tracker and it supports the basic kind of queries that you'd expect from uh, the Windows File Explorer UI that I showed earlier. Um, it also uses this TLibG lib integration, um, which actually was another Hack Week uh, project uh or it started as as it as it started as a hack week project at least and it a variation of it is now in um the samba upstream code but essentially it just allows um glib communication asynchronous communication to be handled by the samba uh, t event um messaging framework uh, previously you would have had to go through all, all sorts of uh, hoops to try and run a uh, glib asynchronous um, communication, maybe by running it in a separate process and then communicating with that separate processor over a, a separate thread or whatever. Uh, that's no longer needed. Um, so obviously the, the heart of trying to implement something like this is a, a query conversion. So uh, the Windows search protocol query is a binary blob basically, and but it consists of a command tree of restrictions and those those restrictions, there there is quite a few types defined in the protocol document, and there's maybe about fifteen or or so. Um, the I think you can divide them into sort of two types, um, kind of a simple type, which are mostly um, comparing property values in, in some way or, or other. So maybe like a a file name that starts with something or um, an album artist equal to something or you know you get the kind of idea uh, but some of the other restrictions are shall we say more exotic or they're, they're kind of more focused on the full text search capability type things so they're talking about um you know restricting on probabilistic ranking or vector space 
ranking. Um, I don't even understand what those things are, but uh, luckily the search uh, sort of examples that I've been looking at are only of the simple type, so I haven't really explored these other um, restrictions. Um, so to convert this uh, binary message to something, in this case, that Tracker would, would understand, you need to talk to Tracker using uh, Tracker Sparkle, which is the query language that it uses. Now, I'm not going to obviously go into the details of a Tracker Sparkle, but uh, technically what I do is start with a template and then um, you, know, you can see dollar columns here, dollar restrictions and dollar sort. These are all items that are exploded from information from the, um, the binary query. And you can see an example of what that kind of query looks like in a, in a second. Um, oops. Too clicky. Uh, there's also a, a, a client. Um, so it's a CLI client. It has two modes. So there's a simple mode where you just specify a kind, like the UI showed earlier. So that's it. You can select a document or a, or a picture or something like that, and you can optionally give it a search phrase as well. Um, there's also a more complex variant where you can actually pass it a, a textual query, where that query is using a, advanced query syntax or actually something that's and it looks like it, which is something that's defined by Microsoft. And I don't know if you can see this on, on the slides, if it's big enough, but here's a, an example of the simple variant. So we're just looking for a picture uh, and I managed to crop it a bit aggressively. So you should see here a server name and uh, a share, but that's not actually there. Uh, and we're getting back a number of results, and you can see in this case they're clipped, so you, you can you can limit the number of results for um, efficiency. Uh, here's uh, an example of the more complex variant. So in this one, uh, you can see the AQS thing is kind of reasonably simple to understand. So it's just it's actually the select part here is not part of the. Uh, EQS specification, but it's just something that allows me to uh, specify what columns you want to get back. So you're selecting, in this case, a uh, number of columns, name, size, URL, uh, where the thing that you're looking for is a picture. Uh, it's of a very, very small size, and its name, its name starts with CVC or Wi-Fi, and then we get a couple of results back in the example here. Um, but the other thing that I wanted to mention that's part of the package of things that um, are, is provided with the WSP feature is this uh, translation tool. Um, so the main purpose of it is to allow you to replay um, query bytes um, so that you can see what qu query would be passed to the backend indexer. And so to, to this end, what you can do is you can use uh, Wireshark. And again, this is something that was mostly done in a hack week or two. Um, so Wireshark now has a dissector for the Windows search protocol. Uh, this is the query message. You just select the Windows search part of it, use the context menu, export the bytes, and you can feed that into this tool called WSP to Sparkle. And in this case, you can see um, the actual tracker Sparkle query that the server would use. So going on to the subject of the last hack week and the investigation into looking into Elasticsearch. So um, interestingly, Samba has another search technology or support for it, which is called Spotlight, which is something that's part of the Apple stable I don't know if it's actually part of iOS or Mac OS or both, but it's a, another search technology anyway. And it got um, an Elasticsearch backend, and I happen to be involved with the review of some of that code. So it kind of brought it to my attention. And the reason why it got Elasticsearch was um, because Elasticsearch being a, an enterprise kind of grade uh, indexer. So for Hack Week 19, I decided to have, use some time or use that time to look into this as a potential backend for 
with the search protocol. Um, I also have to say that I hadn't in the recent past, the last two years anyway or so, really looked at the Windows search protocol and um, there had been some interest in people mailing me and asking on some of the lists what the what the status of this feature was. So this was a good way to kind of reignite that um, for me anyway, get, get myself back into it. Uh, so what is Elasticsearch? For those of you who don't know, um, please don't expect a a really sensible definition of Elasticsearch. I only investigated it uh, quite lightly, uh, just enough to use it. Um, so it's uh, it's based on Lucene. Hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, but the kind of most important thing to take away from what it is, besides being um, an enterprise grade um, indexer, is that it is actually the most popular one out there, uh, according to Wikipedia. Anyway, and of course we must believe Wikipedia. It's always right, right? Um, Uh, so the main thing is that it's cloud-based, it can be clustered, um, it has some cool kit kudos in that it uses JSON, has RESTful API. Um, so as part of the hack week, what I did in terms of looking at this was, first of all, I looked at the Spotlight code that was there, uh, basically eyeballed it. Um, I looked on the Elasticsearch website, um, here are some URLs that you might want to have a look at it if you're interested in it. Um, so there's a very good intro. Um, actually, there's also tutorials. I don't have the uh, URL for that. And um, specifically for what I was looking at, um, there are many ways actually to kind of bundle up queries, uh, but the one that seemed to fit best for me was this full query DSL which is the main specific language, and there's the URL there to that. Um, so I downloaded the RPM, started looking at the tutorial going through that, so you communicate with Elasticsearch using Perl. And while the tutorials are great, you know they show you how to populate documents into Elasticsearch and search stuff, it doesn't really suit the purpose of what I wanted to look at, which was something to do with file systems. Uh, but luckily, there's another open source project called FS Crawler, and again, some URLs here for you to uh, look at in your own time if you're interested in this sort of stuff. Uh, but basically, FS Crawler, you can configure it to use the YAML file um, to index parts of your file system, uh, and it'll do a similar thing to Tracker and a similar thing to the Windows Search Service in that it'll basically crawl your your um, file system and mine all the metadata of the various files that you um, have on there. So obviously getting onto query conversion, it's a big part of seeing how uh, Elasticsearch will stack up in terms of being able to service Windows search requests. Um, I went back to this translator tool I mentioned earlier. So the first thing I did was change the name of it because it was called WSP to Sparkle. So I just renamed it to WSP2 change it to take a, a parameter where you could specify the flavor of the conversion you want to do. So it takes elastic or tracker now. And um, the other thing that I did was allow it to optionally take this um, stringified query. So the AQS query I mentioned earlier. Um, so the idea here was in addition to be able to replay um, lots of these uh, query bytes, and I have lots of examples of them, I have quite a library of them that I've captured from um, actual Windows clients doing queries uh, against Windows servers. Um, being able to specify a query um, textually, um, in sort of for for the Windows search client, I did it so you could do more complex queries. But for here, it's actually advantageous to use it to actually create simple queries, which allows you to build up. The, I suppose the query conversion capability um, more easily. So it was very handy in doing that. So here's a, a quick example of it doing that. So you have WSP2, in this case Elastic, and there's uh, basically the same query that we had earlier. And uh, this is an example then of a partial Elastic query. Um, and again, use a Template. So this is the Elasticsearch qu 
query template that I was using, um, actually shamelessly stolen from the same spotlight code I mentioned earlier. And that, um, if we go back here, and this part within the quotes here is what gets substituted into the restrictions part. Um, and these columns here are basically the columns that you get, want to get back. And uh, there are two additional parameters here that are to do with results. So you have a from, which defines where in the result set you want to start getting results from, and size, which would equate to the number of rows you want to get back. Excuse me. So in addition to uh, mucking around with the query uh, code, um, I wanted to try and actually get a server to work to try and generate real life searches into and try and get to work. So I started with, I started just by duplicating the um, concrete implementation for Tracker and uh, allowing another backend to be selected um, via configuration in the uh, smb.conf file. And then I just, started chipping away at that duplicated code to try and make it talk to Elasticsearch. And eventually I got some simple queries to work. Unfortunately, it didn't actually get that to happen within the time frame of the hack week. Um, but it got close to it, actually. Um, so what kind of things kind of did I discover um, from this? So, well, obviously, uh, with all of this duplicated code, um, I found that I'm doing a lot of things, very similar things, but not maybe not quite the same. So you're doing a lot of persistent state between calls, but it's not quite the same state. And um, when tracking queries, there's a lot of uh, data that you need to hold on to, um, and it's again quite different. But then there is another class of work that's actually exactly the same. So some properties um, maybe that are very similar between the two implementations. Uh, need to be converted. A, a, an example, obviously, would be something like um, a file path, which is represented as a URL. So um, all of the indexers in question, like Tracker or Elasticsearch, are going to deal with normal system file URLs, whereas the Windows Search Protocol expects um, a special kind of URL, where it's like the normal URL schema, and then it's the NetBIOS name, the share path, and then the rest of the, the, the file path. So um, lots of times, nearly everything, uh, nearly every property that you get back from the indexer needs some sort of post processing in order to make it consumable by the Windows search client. Um, so obviously, yeah, there's a lot of rework needed on how to do that. So maybe at least some of this maybe could be solved by using some sort of internal API to make it easier to do, you know, that sort of. Uh, holding state between calls and having that that managed at a higher level um, or maybe having some sort of pluggable um, architecture that does some of this separately, maybe by having a registered shared library or something like that. Another thing that came up was um, an issue of multi-index support. So uh, Elasticsearch users um, seem typically to spread their data across multiple indices. And in fact, the FSS, the FS crawler um, that I was using does that also in terms of it splits files and in the and folders into two different indexes. But the way that uh, the Windows search queries are built and targeted, they kind of are are generated with the expectation that uh, the file type can be disambiguated by a property value. So it, it could be that this is not going to fit very well with the current, at least with the current template that I'm using very easily. Uh, and in fact, um, like folder, you might have noticed if, if you saw the um, in the screenshot earlier from Windows is one of those types. Um, and talking about properties, we're using FS Crawler. I'm using FS Crawler in this instance, but 
and you can push anything you, you want into Elasticsearch and maybe somebody is using Elasticsearch, but they're using something else. Um, so it's kind of schema free really. So how do you, how do you solve that problem of um, random properties that are being used and stored and the associated um, pre and post processing that might need to be done in order to form a query and or um, process the results. So I have to, I guess, either think about making that aspect of it again, more configurable or pluggable or just saying, I'm not going to support FS crawler and, and that's it. Um, so I suppose, you know, does this really help uh, Elasticsearch? Is, is it better or is it worse? So a lot of the things I'm describing here is probably not very clear or actually common problems with the, or problems with the tracker uh, implementation anyway. Um, so mapping of restriction types. Um, so definitely with Elasticsearch from reading the API, there seems to be a lot more similar concepts to the Windows Search Protocol restrictions, the more exotic ones, for example, than with Tracker. Kind of with Tracker, with looking at the documentation, I kind of get the idea that the full text search part of it is kind of tacked on at the end. But uh, neither am I a, a Tracker expert. Um, there's enough to be done in just the implementation of the protocol and dealing with the, the Samba aspect of it. Um, so mapping to and from the specific properties, so between the Windows Search pro Protocol properties and the properties that are used by the various indexers that you could use, there's not really any difference. Elasticsearch is no, no easier to use or no no harder. Uh, of course, there are some instances where maybe some of the properties are, are easier to deal with. So for example, with um, when you're when you're looking at media types, um, you can you can you can do sort of property comparisons in Elasticsearch with media types and use wildcards, whereas in Tracker it's slightly more difficult. You you have to uh, mention them individually. So I know I just said it doesn't really make much difference, uh, but there are some ways that uh, one might be uh, slightly better than another. Uh, and then we come to cursor navigation. So this is the one that really promises to to make a big difference. So there's a huge improvement here. Um, one of the big problems with Tracker is that you have to cache the results, and you have to do that for two reasons. One. Uh, is because uh, the way that I use Tracker is it uses a dedicated, non-privileged user to run uh, a system tracker service. Um, so that means that if you want to do ACL filtering, you can't depend on the fact that because the tracker indexer was able to um, index the content that you as the user who's searching should be able to actually access the search results. And the other reason is that uh, Tracker, uh, for its cursor navigation, uh, can only iterate the cursor forward through the results. You can rewind it and you can move forward. That's it. Uh, the WSP sort of message to do with retaining results or gathering results um, wants to do this sort of in a kind of random ask, access, ask, access fashion in that it allows you to say, I want results from this point in the result set and try and give me uh, X number of results back. And the server will try and fit that number of rows into the response message um, if it can, but it'll fit what it can basically. So if you remember um, the template earlier, let me get back to it. That's where this from and size are a really good match. And basically, that means that. Um, sorry, I've gone past. Basically, that means that um, you don't need to cache any results in terms of cursor navigation. The other reason, as I mentioned, why you might need to, to cache the results is that if you want to ACL filter them afterwards, um, which you possibly would have to do with Tracker, unless you're willing to accept that if tracker can access your the results, then that's fine. Um, Elasticsearch at least um, allows you to um, 
have assigned security roles for authenticated users and then you can use those authenticated users to define security or document level security. Or at least that's how I read the documentation. I haven't tried it. And in fact, when we get if we get to the demo section, um, I can show uh, some of the Elasticsearch communication and uh, the uh, proof of concept server that I have at the moment. It only talks HTTP, so everything's over plain text. And it doesn't even use uh, an authenticated user. It's it's just non-privileged going going across um, the, the Elasticsearch directly. Um, so the other thing to mention about that is uh, the Windows Search Protocol makes some guarantees. Uh, one of them is that once a, once a query is open, that any results that you you um, that you 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 look for are going to be the same. Uh, so again, when Elasticsearch uh, is gathering results back uh, from a specific portion of the the results, so it's looking for results from we we'll say index ten and wanting twenty results, you have to send the full query again. And uh, there is uh, a possibility, obviously, that the, the results might change. That's an expectation. Uh, when you when you use Elasticsearch, that isn't there with the Windows Search Protocol. Um, the alternative, if you want to, uh, if you want to provide that sort of guarantee, you would have to cache the results. But I think, you know, if, if you're if you're using the Windows Search or if you're using Elasticsearch as a backend, uh, that's a quite valid expectation. Um, to live with. The other thing is nested queries. So nested queries is this kind of um, idea with the Windows Search Protocol that you can a client can refer to another open query uh, and further refine its results. So I haven't seen anything either, either Tracker or Elasticsearch that does anything similar to that. So in fact, what I end up doing is um, having to reconstruct an entirely new query based on the query that's been referenced. Um, another issue is uh, entry ID mapping. So uh, this is where you have a query using uh, IDs that identify the actual documents in question. So both Tracker and Elasticsearch have a unique identifier for each element in the index. And uh, Windows Search Service has a similar capability, except that the ID that they that it uses is a 32-bit integer, which obviously can't uh, cover the full set of uh, documents in an index. So there obviously is some sort of recycling strategy. Uh, but I suppose you could take it that the those IDs are, um, are at least valid over the set of open queries that exist. In other words, any results that are associated with those open queries, any entry IDs that are mentioned there would be valid. Um, but the, the thing is that you often see queries with, with Windows Search, with the Windows Search protocol saying, um, I'm looking for uh, a document with this ID or that ID or that ID that has maybe um, uh, a, um, if it was music files, for instance, that has uh, the artist equal to that or the genre equal to that. Um, and the thing is with Tracker, it's actually very easy to use the ID that it uses as a property or in the same way as a property. In Elasticsearch, um, this AQS, or sorry, the domain specific language query variant that I'm using, it doesn't seem possible to use uh, the IDs that uh, Elasticsearch defines for its documents in that way with it. So that could be a problem, um, but I'm sure there is some way around it. I just haven't found it yet. There are also other IDs um, such as chapters and bookmarks, and these are to do with navigation within groups of um, groups of results. But again, this is a feature that uh, I haven't used yet or I haven't had to use because it, it doesn't happen from the from the um, Windows 
clients that I'm using. I'm using the, the Explorer window. Uh, and following from that grouping of results and the aggregations, the API for Elasticsearch and indeed uh, Tracker also seems to handle this. But again, um, it's not something I've seen in the current set of uh, searches that, that uh, I'm trying to service. But essentially, in terms of scalability, uh, with the caveat mentioned previously, this seems like such a better idea than Tracker. Um, I know people uh, talk about Tracker and it killing their machines and most people disabling uh, Tracker functionality uh, immediately. Uh, I never actually had any issues with it, but uh, the one thing, the other thing is that Tracker is GNOME based. It's also a desktop functionality. So if this was ever to go into a server side thing, uh, it it doesn't really fit. Um, so that's another reason why to look at Elasticsearch. It's, it's a better fit. So uh, the conclusions I got that I was that this is obviously a really good alternative to Tracker, and it's definitely worth trying to invest some time into implementing a, a new backend for it. Um, if anybody has any knowledge about Elasticsearch or Tracker and is interested in you know, playing around with query conversion, especially, uh, maybe the next hack week, somebody might be interested in helping me with that. Um, as for usual kind of things that people look for, uh, here are some Git URLs for um, some of the stuff that I have here. So these are the main uh, Windows search protocol work in progress branches that I have. They're in various states of um, confusion, I guess. And uh, I, I presented a demo at Samba XP this year. So the code that has the, I suppose, proof of concept server is in this branch here. Um, and we've only got a couple of minutes left. So I could either answer questions or I could try and do a quick five minute demo and have five minutes for questions. I'm tempted to do a survey. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you, Noel. Uh, there was one question in the chat, but it was already replied by Jim about the specification of WSP protocol. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So are there live questions right now? If not, I could I could just do a really quick demo. Um, I have it set up, so assuming it doesn't, okay. doesn't crash. Uh, um, we still uh, have uh, seven uh, minutes, so go on, and uh, we will see if there are questions after that. OK. Let's try it. OK, so can everybody see that? I hope you can. Um, so let's. Windows machine. So I have okay, so I'm running this virtual machine on, on my host here and on the host I'm running uh SAM server with uh the Elasticsearch Windows Search Protocol enabled. Um I have set up two shares just to demonstrate so this one, test share, has got WSP enabled, and this other one doesn't. So just in terms of uh, general searching um, and doing a quick comparison, we can um, we can look at, say, maybe this is the indexed one. Look for pictures and at least we get some pictures back. And if we, for comparison, look in the non index one and, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, look here for pictures. We can see it actually really goes quite quickly. And that's quite impressive, actually, considering that this search is more or less based on just um, file extensions. So, Windows, when it's searching over SMB, over the file system, it can really only just look at look at that. And um, we can, you know, maybe 
refine the search based on size. So very small ones or uh, tiny ones. And again, we're not going to see really much difference. You'll notice the difference actually in the number of results there. It seems it doesn't really want to know about the, the Windows um, searching without an index. It doesn't seem to recognize GIF for some reason. I don't know why. Um, but we can do another type of search, which is uh, more interesting. We can look for this is the non index one. So now we're looking for music and a particular with a particular album title. And you can see it's it's just killing. It's basically going over the network now, searching for every file, opening the file, reading a certain number of bytes in order to try and glean the information about the album title. Whereas we do the same thing here, it comes back immediately. That's kind of the advantage of um, using this sort of functionality. And in terms of Wireshark, just looking at the Windows Search Protocol and HTTP, if we just do a quick search for pictures here, we can see what kind of goes over the wire. You can see we've gotten back 500 or 3,000 and 900 and something or other. And, um, Yeah, it helps actually to turn on the um, capture. So here we should be able to see uh, basically all the kind of things we were talking about earlier. So here's the very densely binary query message. Um, you can see the HTTP Elasticsearch here, and you can. In this case, we're just looking for one column. Here's the actual Elasticsearch query element. Um, and we're, we're not looking for any results back in this case. And then we have a get rows message, which is what's actually stepping through the results. And again, you can see here we're going from 0, 32. So if we go to another one, right here, another one. Uh, this one you can see it's minus offset. It's a, just a special token to say I'm starting from the start, um, skipping forward 64, and I want to transfer 32. So you, we should see um, in the next query going out over HTTP that it's going to start at 64 and look for 32 rows. And indeed, if we look here, you'll see 64, 32. And you have it. So yeah, that's about as much as how it works at the moment. And we're nearly out of time. So I'll stop sharing my screen. Come back and see if there's any questions. Uh, there is one question in the chat, but it was also already replied by Jim. So it's good. So. Uh, it was about tracker, what exactly it is, and where it is. And some discussion about documentation and strategy and policy. OK, so are there more questions from audience at this point? Like okay, then we can conclude. Thank you, Noel, for your talk. Thank you. And thanks uh, for everybody listening.